Welcome to the City Manager's Report. The City Manager's Report, a look at city updates and municipal news, and a preview of the next Oshkosh Common Council meeting agenda. Your hosts, Emily Springstro of Oshkosh Media, and City Manager Mark Roloff. Hello everyone and thank you for joining us for your city manager's report right here on GovTV, your source for the latest and greatest news and updates here in Oshkosh, as well as a preview of the upcoming Common Council meeting agenda. I'm your host, Emily Springstro, joined by our city manager, Mark Roloff. Welcome, Mark, to the first episode of 2019. Great to be here, Emily, and Happy New Year. Yes, Happy New Year to you, too. And we're kicking off the New Year um, on a high note here, too. We've always got plenty to talk about. A lot of good seasonal stuff this year, too, or this uh, episode as well. So we're going to go ahead and dive into some of the hot topics that we have to talk about, um, take a little break, and then we'll review uh, the Common Council meeting agenda for Tuesday, January 8th, 2019. So, Mark, um, obviously, first thing that we want to cover are some seasonal things here with the New Year. We want to remind people of some things that they should be aware of here the first week of January. First one being Christmas tree collection. So if you're already taking your Christmas trees and Christmas decorations down, um, curbside collection is taking place next week. Begins January 7th and then it'll skip a week and then again on January 21st that week. So basically it's your regularly scheduled garbage yes. day collection. So just put it out, but just remember some of the uh, items. Please don't let it get buried in snow. If, you know, shake it out if, you, if it's snowing or something. Uh, do not put in plastic bags and of course we uh, you know, we don't take artificial trees or anything, so we have all the decorations, tree stands removed. If, if you got a tree stand you want to throw out, just throw it in the garbage and we'll take right. care of it that way. Yes, and you can also drop your trees at the yard waste collection uh, drop-off site. Um, and we just want to note, too, that the winter hours through March 31st are from 7 a.m. to 3 p.m., and they are closed on weekends and holidays. But if you don't get a chance, if you like to keep your tree up through Valentine's Day, you can always take it to the yard waste drop-off site, too, Yeah, and it and, makes it that long. <laughs> and yard waste uh, stickers are available now for 2019, so you can get those over at uh, City Hall or Kits and File. That's right, yes. So it's a good time to get all that taken care of um, and more information is on the City website if you have questions just uh, give City Hall a call. M new bus routes and fares uh, took place. They started yesterday, the 2nd of January, and a um, little bit of a change here with the cash fare increasing 50 cents, now being $1.50, but we're still some of the lowest rates in the in the state. Yeah, absolutely. We, we certainly are. It's a good value, uh, you know, free transfers and all that, so mm -hmm. that uh, it is a good value. And of course, uh, we, you know, just because it's uh, not an even dollar anymore, it makes it a little awkward. So, you know, just, uh, you know, make sure you have exact change and everything. So it'll just make it easier and it'll help all of you and your fellow passengers to get along with that as well. Right. And if you're curious about any of the other types of fare, um, you know, with the go the additional paratransit and things like that, just check out their Facebook page. They've got a lot of really good information up and updates on there. They did tweak a couple of the routes as well. And so we want to make sure people are aware of that. I think they um, tweaked the one on the west side so they can service the outlets a little bit better. Yeah. And the, they're very minor. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if, you, if you're if you using it to go out to the outlets, you're going to want to take a look. Yep. If it's just on the way there, you don't need to worry about it. It's still on the same half hour route schedules, the same connections, same points. So those issues won't be an issue. Uh, so uh, just take a look if you're uh, at all curious. But uh, for the most part, it's pretty much status quo. Definitely. So once again, more information, Facebook is a great resource for that. And then, of course, Mark, it's January, which means it's time that we're really going to start plugging for the state of the city because it's only a few months away and we have a date set up for the state of the city. Monday, March 18th uh, at 6 p.m. over at the convention center. Pretty much a setup that we've had in previous years mm -hmm. where the uh, uh, the city expo is there to meet all the department heads and then I'll start the state of the city address about 6 30 but come early. People love to uh, congregate and socialize and everything and you'll learn a lot about different things that are going on in the city. I cannot cover everything at the state of the city so you'll get a really good uh, overview of things from uh, different departments if you uh, pay a visit to some of those uh, those expo booths. It really is a great opportunity for people to talk face to face with city department leaders, um, boards and commissions and get you know a chance to ask questions and get a personal interaction with these people and so um, we really encourage people to come out at 6 p.m. Monday March 18th and it's really just looking ahead into 2019 of course celebrating 2018 but really you're going to be focusing on some of the plans that we've got for the next year. Yeah it's always fun to look back and, and pat yourself on the back type of stuff but really what this is about is you know what are our goals you know we have a new 
new strategic plan and what goals are we hoping to accomplish over the next year or two mm -hmm. and get people really starting to think forward. And then, of course, we get great input by talking to everybody at the expo. You get ideas on, on how you can do things better and how to maybe implement something. So I appreciate the feedback that I get from, from all the residents that show up. And, you know, we get, get 250, 300 people. We can hold a few more in there, so don't be shy about coming. We certainly want you there. Definitely. So once more, Monday, March 18th, 6 p.m., and we hope to see a lot of the community come out. And then next on our list of our hot topics, Mark, election filing deadline has passed, I think it was yesterday, um, here the first week of January, and that means it's it's time to take a look at some candidates. So we've got a few different people that are running for mayor and council. Sure. Uh, you know, the uh, there are three candidates for mayor, which... Uh, which triggers a primary, yep. which will be held on Tuesday, February 19th. Um, there are five candidates for the Common Council. That does not require any type of primary. So they'll automatically, all five candidates will automatically advance to the general election on Tuesday, April 2nd. So uh, I'm sure that Oshkosh Media is going to be doing, yes. you know, candidate uh, debates and things like that. So look for those, but knowing that there's three candidates for mayor, don't sell the primary short it's important for everybody right. to vote and uh you know your vote does count and sometimes we get under 10 percent turnout you you don't want that to happen we had a wonderful turnout what 75 percent in the november elections let's go for it let's get great turnout and uh and show your uh your civic mindedness by yes. coming out to vote make your voice heard get out here and vote i know the clerk's department is working hard on pre preparing for this and everything um and we encourage people to get out there and like mark said we're gonna have some programming um with any of the upcoming uh, league of women voters council debates and things like that so be on the lookout for that coming from oshkosh media moving down our list mark we also want to promote oshkosh outlook coming up on january 10th um every year i believe in january they have an event that is a really nice panel with community leaders kind of looking forward into 2019? It's five different uh, governmental entities in the area. It's the city, uh, Winnebago County, Oshkosh Area School District, Fox Valley Technical College, and then uh, UW Oshkosh. All the leaders of those respective agencies are there to just give a quick outlook. We get about five to seven minutes, so you, it's very concentrated, but very comprehensive. Mm -hmm. And it's over at Fox Valley Technical College, and uh, there's lots of time for Q&A. So if you have a question that we haven't addressed in our five to seven minute overview, there'll be ample opportunities for you to talk uh, and an ask questions. And then, of course, afterwards, uh, chatting with people afterwards. Uh, it's sort of a very uh, tightly uh, wound uh, maybe state of the city, but it's for all the governmental entities. So uh, it's, it's a nice opportunity and it's a good way to get out on a cold winter's night. Exactly. It's a great way to get out on a cold winter's night. I love, night. I love that. Um, and some of the things that you're going to be focusing, Mark, uh, in your very brief presentation, things like um, infrastructure, different priorities for 2019. Yeah, just, you know, obviously talk about our strategic plan and what things you'll see in the first year of our strategic plan, but infrastructure is obviously a big issue. And then a few uh, issues, some of which we're going to be talking about today on the show, you know, just uh, new rules and regulations with the state and how we're going to uh, respond to those as well. Excellent. So we look forward to a lot of great information at Oshkosh Outlook January 10th. Um, I believe they have a Facebook event too, so check out that if you are looking for more information on details about the panelists and um, the event itself. Moving down, we've got to give one more plug for City Manager's Report Top 10 of 2018 uh, before we move into the 2019 stuff. And it was a great episode. We had a lot of fun preparing for it and recording it. And uh, really, it's it's just an awesome way to look back on 2018 accomplishments. Yeah, that's where we look back. You know, the state of the city is looking forward. The uh, City Manager Report Top 10 gives us a great opportunity to take a look back and talk about uh, some of the, the great accomplishments for for 2018 and some of the issues that were out there as well. Uh, and uh, encourage people to take a look at it. It's on YouTube at Oshkosh Media. So uh, take a look at it and enjoy and uh, get a little nostalgic about 2018. Yes, and we'll revisit our number one, I think, in the agenda today as well in this episode, right? Keep plugging away. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna be talking about these things. They're great, they're great projects and we're happy to talk about them. Great, so once again, that's airing now on um, Oshkosh Media Channel, Gov TV, on our website, on YouTube, and on Roku, if you're interested in that. So then finally, we wanna give one little brief recap on something that we've talked about the last few episodes of City Manager's Report, and that's the City Hall Elevator is now completed and it's run. It's up and running. We're happy to have 
our public meetings back here at City Hall and have the option of having the elevator to access the upper floors. Oh, absolutely. And I appreciate everybody's patience through that process. Uh, it's still got a few little bugs, but it's still opera it's operational right now, which is the big thing. And of course, we're, we're happy to have the meetings back uh, at our home base. Definitely. So check out Oshkosh Media for the upcoming meetings, and that will be RDA um, in room 404, uh, Sustainability Advisory Board on Monday at 6 p.m. in room 404, and then Traffic and Parking Council. That'll be a busy meeting day, as well as County Board. So all that will be covered on Oshkosh Media, but if you're looking to attend them, they are back into their normal spots um, where they take place. So that's going to do it for the first half. Now it's that time of the show where uh, viewers have the chance to ask their city manager anything they want about things that are happening right here in Oshkosh. It's the question mark segment, so let's see what the question is this week. All right, Mark, so the question this week is when will the community ice rink at Riverside Park be opening? Well, the, the short answer is that it's all about the weather. And even though we've had some cold weather as of late, the, it takes a lot of sustained cold weather to keep the ice uh, uh, workable from a, from a skating standpoint. <laughs> yeah, frozen, I guess. Yeah. That's the technical term, huh? <laughs> uh, you know, our parks director, Ray Maurer, has gone out there and, and stepped on the ice and bubbles and gushing still is happening. Um, you know, it, it looks okay when you just look at it, you know, from a distance. Uh, there was some snow on it, and actually the snow actually kept an insulation layer so we couldn't get out there immediately after the initial snowstorm that we had just the other day so we have to let mother nature do its work weather for the upcoming weekend is actually above freezing so we're going to be actually going backwards not forward so uh, you got to just be patient with it uh, we certainly want it to be open but we we have to make sure it's safe for everybody it's not like you're going to fall through the ice like you would at Menominee Park but it's, you'll get very wet and very miserable, and <laughs> it'll just make it take longer for it to recover. So exactly. it's best to keep everybody off for the time being. So uh, we know people are loving it when it's open, but just if you can just be a little patient, we'll, we'll get it done shortly. We've got a long winter ahead of us to hope for cold weather, right, Mark? So uh, <laughs> yeah, thanks for your patience. And then also we do want to let you know that the, the Parks Department will always be updating on the status of the ice rink on their Facebook page. So make sure you follow Oshkosh Parks Department on Facebook, and they'll be uh, letting everybody Everybody know uh, what the latest updates are on the Riverside Park Ice Rink. That was a great question. So if you'd like to send a question to Mark, make sure you send it to us on Twitter at City of Oshkosh. Post it to Oshkosh Media Facebook wall or email it to question mark at ci.oshkosh.wi.us and he'll answer it on the next episode of City Manager's Report. So with that, we're going to take a quick break here on the show. And when we return, we will go ahead and take a look at the, look at the Common Council meeting agenda for Tuesday, January 8th, 2019. We'll be right back. Attention Roku and Apple TV viewers. Oshkosh Media's GovTV and Life TV are now streaming live on Roku and Apple TV with many programs in HD. Simply search for Oshkosh Media in the channel store on your Roku or Apple TV device and install the free Oshkosh Media channel. Open the channel to access live streams for either GovTV or Life TV. If you're one of the many who have decided to cut cable, you can still watch live local programming, government meetings, and community-produced shows and content on your favorite streaming device. Don't forget to check out Oshkosh Media online at oshkoshmedia.org or the Oshkosh Media Facebook page for schedules and more information. Welcome back to City Manager's Report. Thanks again for joining us. Uh, now we're in the second half of the show. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the City Council meeting agenda for Tuesday, January 8th, 2019. So, Mark, the first item that we want to highlight here is the approval of the initial resolution for special assessments uh, for two different streets projects, um, one focusing on Hazel Street and the other focusing on Oregon Street. And so this is um, a, a lot of projects that we're looking at here well that we get started at the beginning of the year uh, with uh, planning our projects and everything so the two big street projects and this is for everybody's uh, information because these are these are two 
uh, major streets in Oshkosh. Uh, the first one is Hazel Street from Washington Avenue to Irving Avenue. And that's uh, right on the right in front of Menominee Park mm -hmm. and getting going on that. And uh, there's a lot of work that's been there. If you've driven that area, you, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, so that's that's one of them. And then the other one is phase two of Oregon Street. Now, this phase of Oregon Street uh, for 2019 will be from uh, West 16th Avenue to West 21st Avenue. So it'll be through the 20th Avenue intersection. So those are the two big projects that are going on in 2019. So uh, we like to let people know about it in advance because uh, if you notice with other projects, it does cause a little bit of inconvenience and we certainly want to uh, give everybody plenty of advance notice. Definitely. And now a question would be about the council considering changing the policy on the assessments. That's always been a topic of conversation. Can you give us an update on that? Well, it's been an ongoing issue. The council has referred that back to the Long Range Finance Committee. Uh, the one thing I would say about that is that uh, if you take a look at the details of this initial resolution, the council is only considering changes to the special assessment policy regarding streets. And this covers not just streets, but all the utility improvements. So the utility improvements, uh, like any other city that's considered doing this, the utility uh, special assessments remain in place. So this, uh, these resolutions will still be applicable. Between now and a final resolution, all these resolutions require two, uh, two resolutions, one initial, one final. Before the final is done, that's when council uh, will likely make a decision if they want to make any change, if any. Mm -hmm. If they want to make a change, then we'll just simply reduce the scope of these special assessments. If they choose to change nothing, then this initial resolution scope is, is perfectly okay. So I would say stay tuned, uh, see where council's discussion goes. Uh, the Long Range Finance Committee is actually meeting about this issue the night following this council meeting. So they'll be meeting on January 9th. Those meetings are not... Uh, televised, uh, just do programming mm -hmm. challenges, uh, but their report to council will go back at a subsequent meeting. Excellent. And yeah, great point that the, there's so much more involved in here than the street items too. So if you're interested in, in seeing all the details in this nice long agenda, a couple of agenda items, um, the agenda is available online too. Um, but yeah, a lot of a lot of behind the, uh, underneath the pavement and the asphalt and everything else involved. We're still doing it all. <laughs> and, and those assessments aren't as big, but yeah. they're still, they're still applicable and we want people to know that that they'll still be out there. Excellent. Moving down the agenda, Mark, we have an item regarding the purchase from Jefferson Fire and Safety Inc. for three lifeline ambulances for the fire department, um, a number of 870,927. Um, tell us a little bit about what the, the purchasing process is with our ambulances and how it all works. Our ambulances generally have a life of 10 years. Uh, we have three units that are on the front line and then three units that are on the back line. We purchase new units every five years and then the the ones we purchased five years ago go to the back of the line, go to the, the rear line. Uh, the three oldest ones, the ones that are 10 years old, uh, those are sold at auction. And then we put the new ones on the front line. And that's pretty much the, ro the rotation schedule that we use. With the number of ambulance calls we have, the, number, the volume of ambulance calls continues to rise. So if anything, you know, we have to do a lot to keep these things uh, with a five-year life because they, they're used so actively. Mm -hmm. uh, because we purchased a new uh, line of ambulance units, we want to maintain the consistency for training purposes. And so somebody can turn around and know exactly where a piece of equipment is during uh, a life-saving event. So uh, we generally purchase from the same vendor. So we've negotiated a price that, uh, that they've made available to a bunch of other communities. And so that's what we're doing. Uh, the 870000 will pay for three of those ambulances. And they're going to be stocked with the various things that are needed to, uh, to meet all the needs. So uh, we're actually well below budget on this. And so we're real happy with that. Great. And yes, a very important item to be uh, purchasing. And uh, interesting fact about the continuity of the, the fleet that you want to keep it all the same too. So. Absolutely. All right. So moving down, we've got the authorization um, for the city of Oshkosh to formally apply for an economic development administration, otherwise known as EDA, uh, a grant. So can you tell us what this grant is going to be uh, used for? I'd love to tell you because this <laughs> absolutely goes back to our discussion about city manager's it report. Uh, the number one topic for 2018 we're very proud of the transload facility. So uh, we're, we're still moving on that project. The facility is open itself, but the roads there are not totally complete. So we're working with the Economic Development Administration to uh, get a grant to 
put the roads in. Part of the gravel of the road, uh, of part of the road is in, and you can get uh, trucks in there now. But this is a transload facility that you see here as complete, but you see the gravel road in front of it. What we want to do is make that a circular road, not just have it uh, end at a cul-de-sac as you see here, mm -hmm. and have that have a loop that extends out to Clareville Road. A lot of people don't venture out there, and it's not even showing up on any maps yet, right yet. So you can see that this is where we're trying to get all these uh, these vehicles and, and products too. So uh, EDA is very interested in it, but it's a competitive uh, grant, and so we're getting council approval to proceed with this grant. And hopefully, we'll hear sometime by mid-year whether or not we uh, get the grant or not. Wonderful, very exciting stuff, and it won't be the last time you hear about the Transload facility for sure. We're going to keep talking about it. It really is something special in Northeast Wisconsin, mm -hmm. and we're very proud of the fact that we have it, and just want to keep moving forward. Definitely. Uh, moving down, Mark, we've got about eight, um, eight or nine special event approvals here, and we kind of wanted to highlight just a few of them because it is winter here in Ashkosh, and there's still some really fun winter events coming up. First one being the Otter Street Winter Fishery on February 1st and 2nd, 2019, taking advantage of Menominee Park and Miller's. Miller's Bay. Just because it's winter doesn't mean we, we stop doing special events and these uh, events in uh, Menominee Park are just uh, some of the highlights and uh, even in the winter the, the Otter Street Fishery and uh, Battle on Bago and just so many of the other mm -hmm. events, the Polar Plunge which is a great fundraiser, uh, those are all going on throughout the winter and uh, you know, we don't you know, we don't close our doors and gosh gosh and stay inside all winter. We are out there having fun and uh, we, we love working with all the different organizations to get these uh, special events going. And it really does a lot for the tourism here in Oshkosh and bringing people in and uh, we're, we're happy to have these really cool events out here taking advantage of the winter weather here in Wisconsin that we are blessed with especially out at Menominee Park. So looking forward to these as well as the other events that are here that are um, moving ahead into the summer and fall as well. So yeah. Moving down our agenda, Mark, we've got under new ordinances, we've got the modifying of parking regulations on South Park Avenue, Court Street, and North Main Street. So tell us a little bit about what exactly these parking regulations are, what the reason is for them. Whenever we do a new street project, uh, we generally have taken a look at parking regulations and we have to update them. So uh, that, that's basically what's going on. Court Street, we narrowed the street so the parking regulations change a little bit. Main Street, actually, that's a cleanup item from our 2017 project. So we're just getting that all taken care of and then South Park Avenue that has to do everything to do with uh, the Menominee Nation Arena. Uh, we want to make sure that we keep South Main safe and we have a lot of people who who want to take uh, some kind of uh, paid uh, ride either a uh, private taxi or an Uber or a Lyft and uh, we've worked with the arena to to make sure that we can do drop-offs on South Park Avenue east of Main Street so that they're not uh, stopping on South Main Street and gumming up traffic and things like that. So we've, uh, we've identified this area that we're gonna just put some parking restrictions in so that we can do quick uh, uh, loading and unloading of passengers who, who may wanna take advantage of uh, some type of uh, private transportation to get to the arena. That's wonderful, great positive thing and um, we're happy to see people taking advantage of um, the other ways of having rides here in Oshkosh, keeping safe during that traffic time by the Menominee Nation Arena. Moving down, we've got the approval of the official mapping uh, for widening of North Keller Street right, way, right of way north of Oshkosh Avenue. Um, and this is to accommodate some heavier traffic as well, except over by the Oshkosh Corporation headquarters area, correct? We're gonna be moving over our street work. Uh, it was done on Westfield uh, in 2018 and 2019. The focus is gonna be on the extension of North Keller. And we just want to make sure that it's going to be wide enough to meet future needs because during peak rush hour, the demand for, for traffic there will be much, uh, much higher. So we're uh, widening, proposing widening both sides of uh, North Keller, just north of Oshkosh Avenue. Uh, we've been notified, we've notified the different property owners, so everybody's aware of it going on, but we have an obligation to uh, do what's called official mapping that declares our intent. So as development occurs, they know that they need to reserve that right of way for, for future uh, street, uh, street widening. Excellent. Um, moving down under new ordinances, we've also got the amending for the Division 6 res Residential Rental Contact Registration and Inspection Program of Chapter 16 Housing Code. Now this is an update of the existing program, correct Mark? And that's just to, to make sure that we're in uh, with the new law in Wisconsin? The new statutes uh, yes. restrict on how much we can uh, regulate and so our Rental Housing Advisory Board has taken a look at those rules and really uh, 
transformed it into uh, being applicable for the new law. Mm -hmm. uh, specifically, we can identify specific areas rather than do a citywide uh, rental inspection program. So we've done that. And then also um, how we're going to uh, the, adopting the new rules. Uh, basically, the first two inspections are free. Uh, as long as they're they're following all the rules so we have to make sure we accommodate those inspections we want to encourage people to call us for inspections and so we're working through things to make those happen but uh, uh, now that we're under the new rules we have to make sure that we uh, we get the ordinance to align with the uh, state law great thank you for the update on that mark then we've got a few items here right underneath there and the big one is amending the room tax ordinance um, tell us a little bit about the, what what's going on here and why this is really in keeping with sort of the new economy because mm -hmm. uh, with the proliferation of things such as Airbnb home and away uh, all those uh, online uh, sharing of uh, housing uh, they have to play by the same rules that the hotels do. And it's really out of, when you think about it, it's out of fairness to the hotels because if you go to a hotel, you have to pay a room tax. And right now we want to make sure that we have the capability of collecting room taxes from anybody who utilizes these, these Airbnbs. And, you know, these are not professional innkeepers like the hotels are. So we want to make sure that the rules are there uh, so they understand them a little better. They've always been required to do it, but this has given us a vehicle to more effectively uh, enforce it uh, across the board for everybody. It really does level the playing field for anybody who provides uh, housing for pay uh, in the city of Oshkosh. And this is pretty common throughout the country. Yes, definitely, especially in Oshkosh too with the, the amount of events that go on during the summer and um, the the need for this kind of thing. So we're excited to see this and look forward to more discussion on that at the council meeting on the 8th. Uh, the last thing that we really want to quickly just breeze over, Mark, is the police staffing study going to be getting having a workshop on that upcoming on January 22nd. Tell us a little bit about that. One of the goals for Police Chief Dean Smith in 2018 was to uh, put together a staffing study to identify future needs. Uh, the statistics that you look at that are put out by uh, the uh, Wisconsin Taxpayers Alliance and uh, the Wisconsin Policy Forum now uh, recognize that we're one of the lowest uh, expenditures per capita for police services in the entire state. Mm -hmm. Our officers per thousand are much less. And so we, we know that we're, we're lower on the police staffing side than some of our peer communities. So this uh, study was to take a look at where, what areas are we lacking in and what areas should we be looking at putting a little more emphasis on from law enforcement. So Chief Smith has that available to present to the council. Uh, they brought in a consultant that did all that work. So uh, we're planning to show to have the workshop uh, at the following meeting on Tuesday, January 22nd. So look for more details on that and you, you'll hear more about it. But uh, it's really just following through and presenting something to council that they had asked for in 2018. Excellent. Looking forward to seeing the results on that study um, and a great presentation from Chief Smith. So that is going to do it for us. We are out of time here on City Manager's Report. So Mark, uh, I'd like to thank you for joining us for the first episode of CMR in 2019. Always a pleasure. Again, the Common Council meeting is this Tuesday, January 8th. It's at 6 p.m. You can watch it live on GovTV and on our website at oshkoshmedia.org. Um, you can also see it on YouTube or on Roku, which is the newest way to access Oshkosh Media channels. You can also listen to it on 101.9 Oshkosh FM, which is also online and on the TuneIn Radio app for mobile devices. Um, and then you can make sure to like Oshkosh Media on Facebook or follow us on Twitter for all of the latest and greatest community and government programming and updates. Um, and once again, don't forget to check out our YouTube channel for all of those things as well. Don't forget, if you have a question for City Manager Mark Roloff, you can send it to us on Twitter, post it, post it to our Facebook page, or email it to us, and he will answer it on the next episode of CMR. So once again, thanks so much for joining us for your City Manager's Report, and we'll see you next time.